Hi, Heather. start because I know everybody's busy. Time is of the essence. I really appreciate everybody being here. Thank you so much. And um, I'm going to give you some information. If you have questions along the way, please don't hesitate to, to ask. I'm going to be covering a couple of different things. I'm Laura Fogarty. I am an independent pro and I work with a company called Damsel in Defense. We equipped our the short version of our mission is to equip, empower, and educate people so that you are not an easy target, okay, of crime. And I'm going to go over a couple of different things. Let's see. Uh -oh. Okay. Well, can we get? Oh, it can, is it not going? It's not going. No. Blake said that it's up. Like it does that often. Okay. So I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut the primary information is situational awareness. We're gonna be talking about the different levels of situational awareness. So that's really I'm hoping that we can get this. That's really the key. And the information that I give you is not only from a professional standpoint point but also in your personal life, right? We don't just shut off our situational awareness when we, when we leave work or go to work. For some reason, it's... Try, oh, oh, I just... There it goes. Oh. Nope, sorry. Put it down, but... All right, so we're going to be covering. All right, so we're going to be covering situational awareness. We're going to talk about the OODA loop, leveling the playing field, and deciding to win. Some of the slides we're not going to cover just because the amount of time that we're that we have here. But to start off, situational awareness. I'm not going to read word for word, but basically it's the superhuman ability to observe your surroundings and make a detailed assessment about your environment so that you're aware of your environment, okay? It gives you the opportunity to identify a threat before it happens. That's the most important takeaway. It enables you to detect a threat before it happens and it helps you make better decisions in life. So again, we're not talking about just from a professional standpoint, everything that I'm giving you today is for you to use and share with family and friends. It's a skill that must be learned, okay? It enables you to scan the environment and sense danger while maintaining the ability to conduct normal activities. Situational awareness is a choice, for sure. All right, you have to make the choice to pay attention. When you walk out of your house, when you walk out of, a, when you walk out of your own house or your own open house, or you're coming out of the grocery store, you need to take that 10 seconds to look around. You have to make that choice to do that. It's being, it's, it, being aware is a choice, as I mentioned. So the part of the brain that we're dealing with is called reticular activating system. All right, and I'm not gonna go through all of that. Basically, if you choose to pay attention, the brain will monitor your surroundings. The human brain is never more efficient or invested than when it's the host and it's at risk. You must pay attention and communicate that to your brain. If you don't, you will not recognize the presence of danger. Sure. It's always better to say, I know it, rather than I knew it. Listen to your intuition. All right. 
we all have been told through our lives, paying att pay attention to your intuition. Right? What does that mean? Your gut feels it, go with it. Yeah. What? If your gut feels okay. it. Okay, so I have little giveaways here. <laughs> so and we've all been conditioned to listen to our gut, right? But it's not only, as you can see, it's not only your gut. There's nag nagging feelings, anxiety, hunches. You could get a headache, apprehension, fear, all these all these characteristics, it's not just your gut. So if you're fine one minute and all of a sudden you start sweating, that's your brain telling you that something is not right. And if you have good situational awareness about your surroundings and, and your body and your mind and what's happening, you're gonna recognize that. True? Yeah, sure. If you are not aware of that, then you're gonna just, <laughs> you'll dismiss it or you won't even you won't even recognize it so why do people discount your intuition we care about what others think i think that's the most important that's the not most important that's the most obvious reason we don't want people to think that we're making a mountain out of a molehill we don't want people to think that we're like a hypochondriac or we're overreacting and things like that so we care about what people think We'll, we will do more to avoid pain than we will do to seek pleasure. In other words, we don't like confrontation or to give life to a possible attack. That's sort of like a denial, a little bit of denial. We dislike ridicule and embarrassment. Again, going back to what I said at the beginning, <clears throat> you, don't want, you don't want to feel embarrassed if you overreact. It's better to overreact, to be prepared, than not. Correct? and we seek connection with others. So that's really important to remember that it's not just our gut. I mean, most of, a lot of times it is our gut. So many real estate agents choose to ignore the presence of danger because they want things to be okay. This is called normal bias. Has anybody heard of normal, normal bias? They think nothing's ever gonna happen to them. Do you, you don't have to say yourself, but do you know anybody that, that has that mindset? Nothing's ever, nothing's ever, nothing, nothing has happened. I'm 20 years old. I'm 50 years old. I'm 60. Nothing's ever happened to me. So nothing's going to happen, right? <coughs> Wrong. It could. It happens when we are distracted by something that takes our awareness away. And, oh, sorry. The next one's focus lock. Does anybody know what an example of focus lock is? When you're focused on something so much and you're not aware of your awareness, what, what do you, what's one thing that many people do, and I did it before I started working for this company, I did it a lot. So, okay, anybody out there? You got something. Yeah. So, cell phone's huge. Zoning out. <laughs> Zoning out doing what? Focus lock is, is, is focusing in on something. This is a lip gloss. Um, zoning out or focusing. Well, zoning out could be daydreaming. Daydreaming. Yeah. You're thinking about <clears throat> the weekend coming up or, you know, texting is a really big one. Texting and walking, for sure. I almost walked into a, one of those poles outside in a parking garage, which was like the worst place to be, but... You know, you, you get, you understand, right? So what focus lock is. And, and I, and I did, the information is up there basically. You know, both of these dangers, both of these are dangers that real estate agents must fight to overcome. We forget the dangerous occupation, you forget the dangerous occupation that you're in. All right? And you don't concentrate because you're doing, you're multitasking. You do, you, you know, let's face it, you're going from A to B, going to work, dropping your kids off, going to the gym, thinking of that contract. You're doing a lot of things. <clears throat> you're doing more, you're, you're doing not only multitasking, you're doing three and four things at a time, okay? Norm, this is normal, I thought this was kind of cute. If I ignore the presence of danger, everything will be okay. After all, nothing has ever happened before, so it never will. And I mentioned that before. 
basically putting your head in the sand. Okay, you're very vulnerable, vulnerable to this because you interact with strangers, whether you go to their homes, whether you're meeting them other places, whether they're coming here. This is your livelihood. This is what you do. It's very, very, very important. Okay, so here's a here's a cute slide. Would I ever, would you ever wake up on a Saturday morning, open up Craigslist and post, come see me today? I mean, I'm not going to read them all, but you can see them up there, right? Your flyers, have your pictures, have your phone, you know, your phone number, right? I'm, a, I'm alone. Bring a friend who also wants to be alone with me or help you carry out the owner's belongings or me. Right? If you don't catch me at this time, here's my work address, cell number, and other places to hang out that I hang out. Would you ever do that? <laughs> See you soon. I'll be waiting. No worries. I have refreshments. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And this was the example of the focus slot. Right? This happens when we are distracted. I think we. I think we, uh, we covered that as well. So here's a really important concept, mindset. Has anybody ever heard of the OODA loop? Okay. So the OODA loop stands for observe, orient, decide, and act. It was developed by the United States Air Force to train their fighter pilots. The saying is whoever cycles through the OODA loop wins. So what do you think that means? What do you think the, the last sentence, whoever cycles through the OODA loop fastest wins? Thinking that thinking of the four words up, up top, observe, orient, decide, and act. Anybody have an idea? Yes. Well, that person wouldn't be the, out of a group of people, they would be the last ones who would be a victim. And why would, be the, why would they be the last, why would they be the last people? They would do all those things. <laughs> that's, the fastest. that's exactly right. That's exactly right. The person who cycles through the OODA loop, which is they observed, they oriented, they decided, and they acted the fastest. Does that make sense? Of course it does. <clears throat> this OODA loop concept is also associated with situational awareness and is identified with the color zones. So so the white zone, the white zone is unprepared and unready. So a person that was in normal, the normal bias or the, a person in that white zone is a person that is in denial that nothing's ever gonna happen, which we talked about. Or they just have no situational awareness. They're not, they're oblivious. To it. So they're either in denial or they're oblivious. <clears throat> the yellow, the, the, the yellow zone, situational awareness, having good situational awareness. So I'm going to go through the, if my slides came in the right order. Okay. Oops. Yeah. So let me backtrack for a minute. So pretty much those five levels. Tuned out, relaxed, focused, high alert, and calm toast. So uh, the example that they used, if you're driving in a very familiar environment and you're daydreaming, you know, a song's coming on the radio or your kids are in the back seat, right? You're just distracted. You're not paying attention. I used to work in Washington, D.C. I worked in Washington, D.C. Um, as a recreation director for 25 years and a safety and occupational health officer for two years at the Armed Forces Retirement Home in Washington. And I lived in Alexandria. It was about a 45, well, it, used, it ended up being an hour and a half 20 years later, but I would drive on automatic pilot every day to and from work. Was I aware of my surroundings? Heck no. I don't even remember getting to work, especially in the morning. Afternoon, it was traffic, but in the morning, whoop, in there in 45 minutes. Perfect example of, of the white zone. Have you ever arrived somewhere in your vehicle without even really thinking about driving there? 
right? How many of us have done that? You're tuned out. Then what did you say before? Zoned out. Yeah. Same thing. Zoned out, tuned out. That's not a good place to be. The yellow zone, the second level of awareness. That's a relaxed level of awareness. That's where you want to be. You want to be relaxed. You want to be prepared, alert, and have good situational awareness. If you're coming out of your, your home and you're going to work, you want to take those 10 seconds and look around, right? If, you, if it's in the middle of the summer and there's a man across the street that's wearing a coat, are you going to recognize that if you don't have good situational awareness? No. You're going to pretty much go from your house to your car. The person may be in the car if you didn't lock the car. But if you had good awareness, if you took that 10 seconds wherever you are, you would notice that person across the street. You would notice that potential danger either to you or to somebody else because you were looking around. Okay, so, you know, in a car, as it says here, if you're driving in the car, your <clears throat> good situational awareness would be looking in your rearview mirror, looking out your sides, turning around before you're getting in the car, check. It's not being paranoid, it's being prepared. I did a presentation and a woman said to me, all my friends, I've had good situational awareness since I was been a kid because it was a situation that happened. And the parent taught young good situational awareness. And this woman said so many of her friends thought she was paranoid. She still, she kind of, she was strong enough to just dismiss what they said. But I said, no, you're not paranoid. You're just being prepared. There's a difference. There's a difference. Okay, if you're approaching an intersection and another driver looks like he may not stop, you tap on your brakes to slow your car, right? You're getting in, you're paying attention. You're still relaxed, you're not paranoid, <clears throat> you're not overcautious, you're just in a relaxed state. We all should be in that relaxed state. The next level of awareness, focused awareness. It's like driving in hazardous conditions. If you're driving along and all of a sudden, it's, and God knows in, in, in Florida every afternoon, we get our storms. <laughs> If you're driving and then all of a sudden it starts drizzling or raining, if you were on your, if you were talking and you were on earbuds in the car, you may say to that person, hey, I can't talk right now. I have to focus on driving. You've made a, you've made a concerted effort and a change in your mindset to change your behavior, right? Because of the situation at hand. All right, you're being alert to a probable situation, probable danger. You don't take off, you don't take your eyes off the road and you, and you don't let your attention wander. You're, you're more focused in and you're ready to take action if you need to. Okay, the fourth level of awareness is high alert. This is the level that includes the adrenaline rush. All right, this is what happens when you're watching an intersection and the car is not gonna stop. And you have to put on your brakes, all right? And, and I'll, <clears throat> with some, I'll also have time to go through some of the products that we have, <clears throat> but it's really important for you to understand the levels, of, the levels of awareness. High alert can be scary, but at this level you are able to function because you have had muscle memory, you have had the situational awareness on your mind and you, and you were paying attention. So if, before I go to the next one, so if you were in the white zone and you were oblivious to what's going on or you were in denial, what do you think would happen? What, what, what level would you get to very quickly if you were in the white zone and, and something happened to you? What's the color that I didn't go over yet? Black. Okay. So the black zone is panic. It's like a comatose state, right? 
you break down physically and mentally. So if you were attacked and you were not prepared, where are you gonna go? Black, right? Now, how many, you know, how many times do you hear the police, you're in a car accident? Whether it's a car accident or you were attacked and the police come on the scene and they say, what happened? And if you were attacked, they say, can you describe your, your attacker? A lot of times, no. You weren't alert. You weren't alert. And you do, as this refers to, you go into a comatose state. You're, you're no help. Your adrenaline rushes, your heart rate rushes, you know, heart rate, rapid heart rate, unable to think, loss of small motor, small motor skills, clumsy, checked out, the black zone. It's, you're in a comatose state, you're in shock because you weren't aware all along. If you were aware, you would, you would, chances are you would be better prepared for your situation. I'm not gonna say it's, in most cases, paying attention to situational awareness, you can prevent yourself from being attacked. And I'll, and I'll show you some tools that can help you with that. So with the OODA loop, basically it's have a plan based on what you observe. Identify a threat. That is, identifying a threat is situational awareness. And imposing situation seconds matter. What are you going to do? The plan must already be established in practice and you must develop muscle memory. So this isn't something that you turn on, on and off. Every day you should just make an, a, a concerted effort to say, okay, I'm gonna pay attention to my surroundings, where, wherever I am, all right? This is the cycle of OODA loop is by having a plan. So how many of us were taught in school, stop, drop, and roll during fire drills, right? If your clothes catch on fire, stop, drop, and roll. <clears throat> you don't want to check out. You want to have a plan. The brain is an anticipated machine. So again, it goes, it, it most likely anticipates what is experienced. It gathers information from perceived and remembered social and external world, as well as conscious and unconscious memory and processes it. Then it decides on and prepares for what is believed coming next. Again, it's that muscle memory. That's why you must have a plan and practice the plan. If you have no plan, your brain freezes and you're gonna go with the pattern. You're gonna go in the black zone, right? Excuse me, I'm sorry. I just have to That's okay, That's thank, you for, thank, thank you, you for attending. <clears throat> just a cute little picture. Do not freeze, keep thinking, keep breathing, keep moving and keep Buddha looping. All right. It's a, it's a simple concept, but we all tend to not do it. By making certain choices, you're acting, forcing the predator into the first half of the loop where you are now two steps ahead or at least on the same level as the predator. You must have an effective and efficient muscle memory leveling the, leveling the plane. Normal human interact, interactions can be seen as chains of OODA loop, where one person acts, the other observes, orients, decides to act, and acts, and the cycle repeats. So basically, in an aggressive situation, it's possible for a person to get stuck in the first two phases. And I'm not gonna get into all the, the specifics. There's, there's more than you really need to know. I'm just trying to go over. So when you're serving as a real estate agent, you should ask yourself these questions. When you walk in the house, what is going on here? All right, how many of you do that? You walk into the house and first thing you look for, what, the exit, look for the exits? You do that in a house? Like how many, you know, when you walk in that house, you wanna familiarize your, yourself with that house. You want to go check the rooms. You want to see where the exits are. Do they have a back door? Do they have two back doors? You know. You want to look around. What's the general mood of the place? Again, this is your intuition. So they go hand in hand. 
right? Paying attention of the surroundings, even the outside. Like I, <clears throat> I don't have time to go into all those specifics, <clears throat> but I do also talk to people about looking around your house. This is your, you know, your house, personal safety house. Like people have shrubs in front of the house, keeping those shrubs, shrubs trimmed or the bushes trimmed or when you're going to a house that you want to list. You want to keep, you want to look on the side. When you're walking in that front door, just like when you walk into your car, if your car is not locked, then you could, made, could have made a mistake and didn't lock it. You always want to lock your car and you always want to lock your house. Um, but if you're going to the front door, you want to turn your head and you want to look in the shrubs, you want to look in the bushes because people can hide out in the bushes. All right, so... That's, that's really important. What's, what's the general mood of the place? What is the normal activity I should expect here? How is this person behaving? Is anything unusual happening or standing out? You know, when, when you're meeting a person, are they nervous? Do, do, do they make you feel, feel uncomfortable for some reason? And this is male or female. You know, this isn't just men. You know, Notice, you know, be aware of these signs. It's really important. Attacker needs three things to be successful. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Motive, means, and opportunity. Which of the three can, can you win? Most real self-defense situations are not fights in the sense that two people are exchanging blows. In fact, if you let an encounter evolve, into a fight, you've done something wrong, terribly wrong. You need either to escape or end it before it becomes a fight. All right. In other, in other words, you must be able to mark yourself as a non-victim. And I'm going to, <clears throat> you know, that I'm going to show you. It's really, let me see what this other, okay. So it's really important to not be a victim. And educating is important, situational awareness, and empowering you, empowering yourself to be comfortable with a product, whether it's a firearm. We, we sell non-lethal we weapons, um, but people that even, even women that carry firearms should have something else because a firearm is to kill. And not every situation is to kill. So you need something else like a stun gun or a pepper spray or a whistle or something else. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really important that you don't fight. You want, and I'm just gonna show you, um, you wanna stun and run. You don't wanna be there. You do not wanna be there to fight this person. You are, you are <clears throat> if the person does attack you, you wanna be able to, spray and get away or stun and run. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait, yeah, scare him. Um, one of the things that's really good with a stun device, and we have a couple of them, we have a couple of different sizes, but I really like a stun device. I'm gonna make the sound very intimidating, right? Very loud. So, I'll be back. I gotta go take a test. <coughs> okay. But I might be back. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So one of the things that's really good about a stun device is this could be a preventative tool. Why do you why does anybody have an idea why this could be a preventative tool? This can prevent you from being a victim. Just the noise. Exactly. So if you have your know with all, your situational awareness going on and you come out of the grocery store and you go towards your car or you come out of the mall and you're walking in a parking lot, uh, parking lots, stairwells, um, parking garages, stairwells are number one areas for women that are assaulted. Elevators also got to be aware. <clears throat> but when you are going somewhere, I don't care where you're going, and you have a sense that something's not right, you may not even know where that person is, right? You just sense something's wrong. 
you can put the flashlight on and you make that sound and you and in and an assertive voice you say i know you're there you know i have protection they're not going to approach you even if they were thinking of approaching you you are a vic you are a you are a hard target correct you've got protection they uh, attackers are looking for an easy target they're looking for somebody that's texting they're looking for a mom that has two kids and the kids are fighting and he's trying and they're they're trying to put the kids in the car or gro or groceries you're distracted and you're you know putting groceries in the car so this is a very good tool for preventing this is not a taser does anybody know what the difference between a um a, a stun gun stun we're trying to call them a stun device um more so than a stun gun because social media they don't like the word gun so we kind of um, again our muscle memory <laughs> we're changing to use stun device the same thing does anyone know the difference between a taser and a stun okay a taser with the police use it shoots out all right it shoots out the currents it's a one-time use stun device these are recharge you plug them in <clears throat> they're rechargeable and you don't electrocute. I mean, it definitely hurts. It definitely hurts, even even over clothes if you are in contact. Um, but you can use it multiple times. All right. So this is very effective. The really cool thing about our stun guns and and one of our pepper sprays <coughs> is we have a safety wristlet. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that if your attacker does come, and they pull this from you. <clears throat> they cannot use it as long as you have the wristlet <clears throat> this is the activated piece that activates it okay that's really really important uh down here if you have a chance later i have a a uh you can take a picture of it i have the body with the different locations um Oh, sorry, that's with the striking. That's the striking. But anyway, if you did this on any part of the body, it would give you enough time to get away. Again, you're not there to fight. You're there to stun and run. You're, you're there to surprise that attacker so that you can get away. And that's really what it's all about. Okay. So oftentimes a predator will choose his targets. We talked about easy targets based on some conception of risk versus reward. I'm not gonna get into the mindset of people and, and why they attack because there's all different reasons. You know, we have people who have mental illness. We have people who have come upon hard times and they, they have to beg, borrow, and steal to feed their families or to feed themselves, or, um, or there are some serious, serious sick people out there. For whatever reason, there's many, many, many situations. But again, by you paying attention, you can make a world of difference for yourself. Carrying a visible we weapon can significantly increase the risk to a potential attacker. Okay? Would you rather attack a woman with pepper spray in her hand or one with nothing? Right? They're not, again, it goes back to the easy, you're going to look for the easy victim. You're not going to look for some. So even if you weren't even sure, um, if you were just a little uneasy, just having something in your hand visual, visually will send a message to, to someone. Attackers are predators and bullies. Okay. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of the predators, um, but basically, there are several, you know, there's, they're egocentric, impulsive, deceitful, manipulative, there's lots of different, lacking responsibility, there's lots of different reasons why people get into what, what they're going to, what, what they're going to deal with. So leveling the playing field. The damsel in defense stun gun, we talked about the stun gun. Um, 
has, if you, again, if you have good situational awareness, it can detect the threat, fire a warning shot. Um, it's a great, great product. Now, we do have, so this one that I showed you, this is, a, this is one particular, and I'm going to have you feel it. It just feels real good. I'm going to take the, the thing off. I learned that by, in another seminar where I gave it to somebody, and I said, oh, boy, I better take that off because the guy was just ready to press it. But it feels real good. And, and so, like I said earlier, I, I am one that I don't want to carry a gun. That's just me personally. When I joined the company, and this was in my starter kit, I immediately, and I'll, and I'll be honest, when I read stun gun, I was like, I had no idea what a stun gun was. I, I didn't know if it looked like a stun gun. I didn't know if it looked like a gun or what. But as soon as I got this and I put it in my hand, I, I was empowered. I said, I could use this. I could use this. And that is what you have to feel. You have to have comfort, you have to be educated, you have to be empowered with a product that you're going to use. You don't want to have a product and then it's in a drawer, right, at home, or, you, or you're never going to use it. So that's really, that's really important. There's, there's a whistle. I'm going to, I mean, like if a person, if a person was right in your face and you blew this whistle in their ear, right? It's going to surprise them. You want to surprise them so you can get away. That's, that's, that's really the key. The pepper sprays, uh, we do have the pouch of pepper. We, we have come out with some other pepper sprays, um, couple, three or four different types. This particular one has the wristlet. But I'm also going to talk about, uh, and the pepper sprays are, they shoot up to 16 feet. We actually just came out with two weeks ago, uh, two or three weeks ago, a pep, two other size pepper sprays. One pepper spray can shoot 22 feet and the other one I believe is 27 feet, but that's not, that's not allowed in Florida, which I'm shocked because Florida allows anything. I don't know why they won't allow the big canister, but but they do allow the one that shoots up to 22 feet. Um, it has the quick dye, the UV dye, so that if somebody is sprayed, they won't see it, but the police can detect it later. Um, there's a few states that don't allow either pepper spray or uh, stun guns. I do have those, most, sta most states allow. But this particular pepper spray, they came out uh, two years ago with, <clears throat> the pepper spray with shield technology. This is, you download the app and it's a GPS tracking system. So God forbid you were or, or the person that you got this for was shoved in a car and kidnapped or taken. What you do is you download the app and you are allowed to put up to five contacts in there. And this acts just like the regular pepper spray, but there's a little trigger here that you push and it notifies those five people. Hopefully you have a signal. Hopefully you have a signal. But um, interesting. So you also don't need this with you. A couple of weeks ago, I was somewhere and I did not have the pepper spray in my purse. And I, and I, the, the, I pressed my phone and instead of, in, I didn't even realize I did this, but I pressed the wrong app on my phone and my son, well, my husband was with me, but my son and my daughter quickly texted me and said, you know, where, what's going on? You know, they were like, I got your message. Now, I didn't even realize I did it, but it did, it, it alerted them. If they had not, if, if I had not responded back to them, they would have called the cops. They would have notified the police and it was a track, it, it tracked where I was. And I forgot where I was, but they're like, what are you doing there? So anyway, that, that's our, one, of our, one of our cool things to do or to, or to have for sure. Um, now with the, with the pepper sprays is again, down at the end, if you are using, first of all, if you do have a pepper spray, they last two or three years, depending on the 
depending on the company. Uh, so if you do have one or if you know somebody that has one, please have them check the canisters because they do expire. People just buy pepper sprays and don't even think about that. So that's something to keep in mind. And if you do have one or you want to get one, you want to spray in a Z pattern. Eyes, nose, mouth. Make sense? You want to get the most in the open body parts. So remember Z like Zorro. Any questions so far? Okay. So a couple of the other things. These, this is, um, these are different products. And what, what a lot of women like to do, instead of bringing a purse into the grocery store, is they have this arm candy. This arm candy is actually, it is actually, one of the, <laughs> sorry, the, it is actually for a stun <laughs> it is actually for the stun gun. You don't have to use it like that. Uh, we have these RFID. Uh, how many people heard of the RFID protection products? Basically, this protects. There's people out there that scan your wallet for your credit card information. So a lot of companies have RFID wallets out there and, and so that they can't scan the information. This is pretty cool because it's very light and you just, just enough to put your license and your credit card. And if you're going, I don't know, the movies, the grocery store, wherever you're going out for the night, you're just carrying it like this. Um, this is one of the pepper sprays. This is one of them, uh, but we have other types too. And then striking tool. This is one of my favorite tools. A striking tool can do some serious damage. This breaks skin. And I have over there the different parts of the body that are more lethal, if you will, deadly. Uh, obviously, if you go for the jugular, you could kill somebody. Um, but even if you go anywhere, like it, it hurts. If you go, if you go towards somebody with this, and, and it's not sharp, like up here, go ahead and take guess that. It's not sharp to the touch, <clears throat> but if you were jabbing somebody with it, again, you want to jab and get away. It gives you enough time. I recommend people using those in several places. I have one on my keychain. I have one in my car in the front. I also have one in the back seat. I'm sorry, in, in the trunk. I have one in the trunk what, so that when I'm loading groceries, when I'm loading groceries, if somebody came from behind me, I was bending down and somebody came from behind me, I can grab it right there and I can go like this. I can turn around and go like this. But I've got a tool again to break away. Hopefully it'll give me enough time to get his butt out of there and me get to the front seat. I also have one um, at my door. Well, I just moved into Island Walk and the doors are freaking really high. But in Virginia, my doors were lower and I had one right at the door jam. So that if I opened my door, I didn't, you know, if I opened my door and somebody tried to push their way in, I can have something to grab. Right now, I have a little picture frame next to my door, and I have this above the picture frame. Or if you have children, I have my daughter has a two-year-old and a seven-month-old, and I got <clears throat> I got her these to put under the car seat. You don't want to put a stun gun under the car seat or a pepper spray. God forbid your toddler grabbed it. But even if a toddler grabs this, they're not going to hurt themselves but you have something underneath, underneath your seat. So that if, again, if you're struggling and trying to put a baby in a car seat and they're well in and you're out of sorts and aren't you vulnerable? We're vulnerable in many situations. You can't be a hundred percent on top of the game because we're doing things. You do your best, 
<clears throat> but so I have them under her car seat. So they can go in all different places and they're reasonably priced. I mean, they're great to have. Um, <clears throat> another product, which I love because I can bring it through TSA. I just flew back on Monday from Virginia and I'm happy to say that was my sixth time traveling with this. You can't bring any of this stuff on to the plane, obviously. Even, even this striking tool, it, they would see this as a weapon, right? <clears throat> my little trusted pen, kept it in my purse, put it in the basket. They never, they didn't even pull me aside and say, what is this? And if they did, I would say it's a pen because it is a pen, it's a writing pen and it's a flashlight and it's a strobe light. But the cool thing about this product is that if you are, again, if you are attacked and you scraped, if somebody is coming up to you, you're gonna just, just not like, you're gonna be, you're gonna scrape them. And it, it collects DNA and you can give it to the police department. But again, it's, I mean, even if you don't have this and you have a pen in your hand, you're gonna use anything you have, right? If you have a pair of scissors in your purse, you're gonna use anything you can. But this is really cool, for sure. I'm gonna send it, it's not sharp to the touch. Send that around. So <clears throat> that's, really, that's really cool. Um, I didn't say at the beginning, I did say the mission, but I'm an independent pro and I go out into the community and I try to equip and empower and educate the community. But we have a, a, um, a global project called uh, the Safe Houses. And we have these houses, one's in, we have two houses, one's in Cambodia and one is in India, where we actually financially support these safe houses uh, for girls that have been rescued from sex trafficking. We work with an, an organization called Destiny Rescue, and they are the ones that actually go into the brothels, into the borders, and they, <clears throat> and they actually help rescue, rescue the girls. So uh, it's really, really important. And we also, I wanted to just, um, you know, show you that we also are committed to support charities that help women and children. Uh, the Damsel House product is what I was just talking about. And then there's these other, these other charities. So, um, and then I wanted to just, this is another, this is another uh, pep, uh, stun gun that I use when I walk. You don't have to carry the glove, but it feels, again, it feels very good in your hand. And if you carry a small purse, you know, that's something that's nice to carry when you, when you go out at night. And then this is a great alarm. This is good for a door or like if you were in a, if you were any door actually in your house, your garage, you know, if you have, if you have a garage door entrance or a back entrance or, you know, kids in dorms or in a hotel. So I'm going to, so basically you put it under the door and I'm going to make the sound without scaring people too much. There's also a light, it's a very loud sound. Same thing with the, put this against a window. If you put it up against the window and somebody lifts the window, the alarm will go, out, go off. So this is a good product. There's two products that we, that we uh, have for your car. This one's called a road trip. This is, the best, the best bang for your buck, every car should have one of these. This is magnetic, so you can put this on the top of your car. It has seven features. Again, an alarm, a beacon light if it's dark and you need it to be seen. It's got a flashlight, it's got a strobe light, very light, very, very bright. It, if you were in a car accident and your power went out, it's an emergency bank for your phone. You can plug your phone in and your phone can still continue to be charged. These are not run by batteries. You plug this in and there's a car adapter as well. This is a seatbelt cutter so that if you're in a car accident and you either see flames or you go over a bridge, God forbid, or you're, you're in water and you have to get out, 
This cuts your seat belt, and then this part also, if you press this against your car, it's against the window, it shatters the window and you can get out of your car. The other item is over here, and that's a junk, it's called junk in the trunk. It has jumper cables, it has a strobe light, it has, um, um, it has a, uh, a raincoat, it has a hydrothermal blanket, it's got all these, it's got a triangle for the road so that you can keep distance, you know, from you and other cars. A lot of good safety features in that as well. And um, the other thing I just wanted to, to talk to you real quick. So let me just back up for a minute. So basically, mission is to equip, empower, and educate. You want to have a plan A, B, C, or D for sure. And you need to decide to win. All right. Your life is worth living for sure. You want to stage your home, stage your car, and your open house. You know, uh, I was just talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago, another realtor, and she shared with me a story that <clears throat> the open house had ended and she just did not, something, something wasn't right. She, she didn't know what, but she was walking around the house getting ready to close up and everything like that. She goes into the bathroom and, and, and she's OCD. Um, and she, she looked at the shower curtain and because of her OCD-ness, it wasn't right. And not, not everybody would catch this, but like, as she says, because of her OCD, she, she went over and a man was in the bathtub, like standing in the bathtub. Got chills. Man was standing in the bathtub. She didn't know what he was doing. Like he, she didn't know what he was doing. She didn't know if he was there to rob the house. She didn't know if he was there. She didn't get hurt. <clears throat> but she clearly, <laughs> she didn't know what the situation was, but clearly she was in a very uncomfortable situation. And, and he ran out, thank God for her. But um, she now has protection. But you just, you just never know. You just, you just never know. Um, so you really need to be aware. You need to develop a plan. As soon as you go into those houses, you need to look to see where the, where the, where the escape routes are. Where, where, are they, where is there a back door? What if somebody came in and, and cornered you and you couldn't get out the front door? You know, kind of look, look, look around, pay attention, you know, tell people, I know that some, some realtor off, some brokers have these systems where you have to check in with your office and, you know, they, they have to know where you are and things like that. Always communicate, you know, with, with, with someone, at least that's really important for sure. And, and. Be empowered, that you know that you can win, know that you can fight. That's really important. Reduce your risks of becoming a victim of violence. Have situation of awareness, practice the OODA loop, develop muscle memory, and know that your life is worth fighting for. Um, the other thing real quick before we conclude is I wanted to talk, I know this was a, uh, a safe showing presentation and everything that I've mentioned here, please, take this from a professional standpoint as well as personal, but we also have an incredible program called Safe Hearts. And it's an opportunity for adults to talk to children about protecting their hearts and bodies against tricky people and situations. What's a tricky, what's a, what's a tricky situation or a tricky person? Does anybody know? Anybody have an idea? family members, people, people that you know. I raised my kids stranger danger. We didn't talk about, we didn't talk about this stuff. <clears throat> I had a friend of my dad, a, a, a childhood friend of my dad's um, that came to visit us, you know, a couple of times a year. And I didn't know why I didn't, God forbid nothing ever happened to myself or my sisters, but we were just all three very uncomfortable. And it's, it was interesting because many, many years later, we were talking about, well, we were going through pictures and we were talking about him 
And I said to my sister, I said, did you feel uncomfortable when Harold was around? And she said, yes. And I asked my other sister, all three of us felt that uncomfortableness, but we did not talk to each other about it. And we were forced to always give him a hug. But we didn't talk about it that. And, and um, now we have resources for parents and grandparents, aunts, uncles, whatever, adults to, to talk to children. These books are geared towards from toddler to 12 years of age. And there's a parent's guide, very, very inexpensive, $6 for 35 page pap paper book, paperback of, what's it say? How do, you, how do you have these kid conversations? That's not going to freak the kids out. So, you know, that, that's something that we also, also have because as I mentioned before, this is very dear to our hearts. We want to make a difference in protecting everyone. You know, men think just because it's damsel in defense that that doesn't affect them, but we all know it does. My husband's 66 years old, he's a retired Marine, and he doesn't go anywhere without his striking tool and his keychain. We lived in, a, before we moved here four months ago, <clears throat> we had a house in Northern Virginia where we raised our kids and we had a condo in Fort Lauderdale. And we were, Fort Lauderdale, anywhere that you have water, okay, you're gonna have homeless because like they take showers at the beaches, right? So we were, we walked a lot every day and, and one, luckily nothing happened, but one time we were walking by this homeless guy and, and we don't know if he was gonna do anything or not. And half the time, a lot of, a lot of times those people are there on all kinds of drugs. You know, they're, they're out there. So you don't know what, what they're gonna do. But my husband got that, he had, he got his keys out and he was getting prepared. Um, <clears throat> you never know when it's gonna happen. And I'll tell you a quick, two, two quick stories. Uh, when I was 25 years old, I worked as the girls club, of, the executive director of the girls club of Greater Miami. It was one o'clock in the afternoon and uh, it was in Coconut Grove. Anybody know where Coconut Grove, was? Coconut Grove is? It's, it's south of um, Fort Lauderdale. And I was sitting in a car at lunchtime at one o'clock in the afternoon. I was a passenger in a car. <clears throat> I had my purse on my arm and I turned to my girlfriend to thank her to, for driving and I was pulled out. The, 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 the person wanted my purse. And so the purse was on my arm. I was pulled out. I was on the floor. By the time I turned around, I was like 24 years old. By the time I turned around, my purse was gone and I was freaked out. I was very upset. I was okay uh, physically. Um, luckily, for, I mean, luckily for me, they were only looking at, they were looking for cash, probably for drugs. And about a half a mile down the street, uh, the remnants of my pocketbook was sprawled out. My license, credit cards and things like that. But for those 30 minutes, I was freaked out because I was single. I lived, you know, the guy had my address, he had my credit cards, very scary situation. So you never know, you never know what's gonna happen. It doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be nighttime. Um, and so I just wanted to come here to share with you this information to, to plant that seed for you. Uh, you know, whether you were in the white zone or whether you were in, the red zone or whatever zone you were in, I'm hoping that I heightened your awareness a little bit more and you could share the information, use it yourself, but also share it with your colleagues and your family and friends. So that concludes my part of it. Uh, before I do the drawing, does anybody have any questions? Anybody wanna share anything? I do, yes, and, and what I've, so Heather and I have spoken uh, and Heather has offered. So if, if so what we're gonna do, uh, I created on my website a, an event and you'll see when you go on there, it will say Keller Williams Gold uh, safe, safe, uh, safe Workshop and just click in there and we, and just click send to host 
instead of sending it to your house. And what we're doing by doing that, you're gonna, I'm gonna save you $5 by having it sit, unless you want it to go directly to your house. If you order it and it goes directly to your house, that's $5 extra shipping. So place your order, have delivered to the host, and we're gonna have them all come here. And then Heather will let you know, and you can get it, you can get it here. That will save you five bucks. Um, Put the link on our Facebook page. I, yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. Good. Okay. So she put the link on the Facebook page. And then, so try to order um, by midnight on Saturday. If you do want to participate in this particular event, order by midnight Saturday. And if for some reason you can't reach out to me or Heather and let us know, but we're gonna we're gonna get all the orders in Sunday. Um, I'll get with Heather, and that will save you five bucks each to have them delivered. Um, and uh, you know we'll, we'll go from there. So the uh, Heather, did you have any questions? She's good. Good. So um, base. So as I mentioned at the beginning, damsel in defense really has an understanding on how valuable realtors are and how vulnerable you are. They, they, they so much that they created this safe showing for us to take out into the community specifically for realtors. They also created, this is the striking tool, um, but they have the color specifically for Realtor Safety Month. They made this color specifically for us for Realtor Safety Month. You can certainly buy this color, but I ordered a few because I, I have a couple of events this month and I wanted to give this as a door prize. So I'm going to have, let's see. And, and you do have to be here. Well, you do have to be here. So those two that left, so well. Let's see, Linda, Linda, you're Linda, yeah, right? You want it? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so as I said, those are great. Those are great. Those are only 12 bucks. Those are great to have, great stocking stuffers. Um, I have them everywhere. I, I you know, you can't, you can't have enough of those. Um, but without, you know, without, that situational awareness, you're really, really vulnerable. Thank you so much for making the time. I know that you guys are very, very busy, and I appreciate Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. We're going to have you come back. Right sure. Now. I'd love to. Yeah. Did you learn something? I did. I was telling her my mother-in-law, when my youngest daughter learned to drive, she gave her an ice pick to put in the door of her driver's okay. side. Right. That's striking. That's, that's, that's a striking. Bye. Bye. And anything.